Now, every so often a laptop comes along that pretty much checks all the boxes when it comes to the display, the build quality, the design, and of course the price. Now, we don't normally see that, always have to compromise one way or another, whether it be the performance, whether it be the display, or ultimately the price where something else comes in too expensive. That's not the case with the laptop we're about to look at today. It's the HP Pavilion Plus here for 2022. And what this brings to the table is something pretty unique. It has a 2.8K OLED display option with a 90 Hertz refresh rate. Now that's usually reserved for the more high-end premium laptops in the higher price categories. Not only are you getting that 2.8K display, but you're also getting the latest 12th gen processor, the Core i7-12700H. That's a 45 watt CPU with 14 cores. Now this all comes in at a very affordable price of $850. Yes, that is pretty unheard of. Now let's take a deeper look at this to see if it's really worth your money. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP Pavilion Plus 14 here for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from HP, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Okay, here's what's new over last year's Pavilion 14. You can now get this with a 12th gen Core i7, 12700H, that's the top of the line here, 45 watt CPU, optional 14 inch 2.8K display. Not only is that a 16 to 10 aspect ratio and a 90 Hertz refresh rate, it's also an OLED option. This is something you didn't get last year. It also has a full HD 1080p webcam with a host of improvements over last year's 720p. You can get this with the optional RTX 2050 discrete GPU, but that will be offered only with the U series processor, not with the H series. And it's improved thermals for better cooling, and it's offered in different colors, although that's going to depend on your region. Here in the US, you can get it in the natural silver or the warm gold. And it's offered at a really competitive price on sale right now for $849. To me, that is a pretty nice price to performance ratio. And considering you're getting a 2.8K 90 Hertz OLED display, that is pretty amazing. And for those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy it. Again, $849 gets you not only that 2.8K OLED display, but it gets you that Core i7-12700H 45 watt CPU, 256 gigs of SSD storage, which is user upgradable. We'll go into that a little bit later. And it gets you 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. You get a 90 watt USB-C power adapter and they also give you the extension cord as well. Now this is the natural silver and it's an all aluminum design. It's premium, it's rock solid, very little give or flex in the chassis. And at this price point, that is something we like to see. Very good in terms of the build. Now this weighs a little bit more than three pounds or 1.4 kilograms. So it's pretty easy to take with you on the go, thin and light, throw it in your bag and you're ready to get work done on the road. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, a USB-A port, and next to that is a micro SD card reader. And moving over to the right side are two USB-C ports that are full function. They support data charge and display out. They are not Thunderbolt 4 ports, which would have been great. Next to that is an HDMI 2.1 port. And finally, a second USB-A port to round out the ports on this laptop. I would say all in all, a pretty good port selection with the notable exception of no Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now to get inside this laptop, HP this time around made it really easy. All you need to do is remove the four Phillips head screws and that's it. There are no rubber strips to remove. All you need to do is remove those screws, pop off the bottom plate with either a guitar pick or a pry tool and you're in. It's that easy. 
And once inside, you'll notice the two fans for cooling. You'll also notice that 51 watt hour battery. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, the M.2 SSD PCIe Gen 3 is what you get here. Now, I got one terabyte in my review unit, but the one that's on sale has 256. That's the one for $850. Going with the one terabyte will increase the price, of course, but you can do that yourself. So if you get the 256 gig, you can then replace it yourself. Again, good reads and writes. These are Gen 3, but of course, we're seeing here faster Gen 4 speeds in 2022. But the reality is, in real life, these are fast enough speeds, and at this price point, I'm not surprised they went with Gen 3. And when it comes to the RAM, unfortunately, it's soldered into the motherboard. So as the user, you won't be able to upgrade it later on. Now, my review unit has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and it's running in dual channel mode. Now, as far as the wireless is concerned, they went with the Realtek Wi-Fi 6 along with a Bluetooth 5.2 combo card. The good news is it's slotted in, so if you have to change it out down the road, you can. And it's working really well so far. No issues in either the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth. Even though they're using the Realtek, it still had good reception. I've had no issues whatsoever. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to check out the Pavilion Plus here for 2022 is the display options, not so much the IPS Full HD Plus display, which I'm sure is very nice, but the fact that they offer this with a 2.8K OLED display with a 90 hertz refresh rate. And yes, that's not something we normally see, especially at an $850 price point. Now that resolution is 2880 by 1800. It's very sharp. It has some really deep blacks, very vibrant colors. It has excellent contrast. And it really is an OLED display that you can say looks really good. Now having that 90 hertz refresh rate means you're gonna have the really smooth scrolling and the very fluid experience navigating through the OS. It's worked out really well now the numbers are looking good of course on this display it has all the hallmarks of an oled display the super deep blacks the very vibrant colors that just pop off the display and the really high contrast the really sharpness of the image it's all there now as far as the color accuracy it is a 1.25 delta e score meaning it's a very color accurate display anything below two is considered color accurate this doesn't disappoint and it has excellent coverage of the color gamut 100 percent srgb 96 percent adobe rgb 99 percent of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut and 93% NTSC. So this is an excellent choice for that content creator that does Lightroom, Photoshop, color grading, and of course, video editing. And because it has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, you'll see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. It'll be great for productivity work, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. It all worked well. And as I mentioned earlier, I measured 400 nits using standard definition on this, but if you go to HDR, it can get as bright as 500 nits. And the HDR, as you see here on the display right now, looks great on this. Watching movies and Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube has been excellent with the Pavilion Plus. And it does have a low blue light filter helping reducing eye strain. That's good. And the bottom line is you rarely find a display of this caliber at this price point of $850. Now I did see another one that really was intriguing and that of course was the Asus ZenBook 14. The OLED display on that was really great and so was the price point. For those that didn't see my review of that, I'll drop a link in the description below. But really other than this HP and that Asus, there really is not that many that you can get with an OLED display at these price points that are affordable but doesn't skimp on the display. And that's what makes this so great so this is the front facing camera on the brand new hp pavilion plus a really nice laptop and especially for the price you're getting a lot we're going to get into it in this video but what we're looking at here is a 1080p webcam it's a really nice webcam in my opinion what do you think about the video quality what do you think about the audio quality uh let me know is it good for your zoom calls is it good for your work from home needs let me know in the comment section below Couple of things to note, there's no shutter switch uh, on the camera itself, and I don't see a button on the keyboard that turns it off. So I don't think you're able to turn off the camera without having to put some tape on it or something like that. But if I'm wrong, I'll let you know, but I just don't see it on the keyboard. Now, as far as Windows Hello login, this is not a Windows Hello camera, but there is a fingerprint scanner located below the keyboard on the right hand side that works well said it was easy and has registered my finger each and every time i've used this work well so far but i'm curious to know what you think let me know what do you think about this camera i am curious to know 
Now, in addition to having this really nice Full HD webcam, HP gives the user control as to brightness and the sharpness of the picture and stuff like that all in an app. And that's been pretty good so far. Very good for video conferencing on this device, no doubt about it. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger and the screen will only go as far back as you see here. Now, as far as this keyboard is concerned, I absolutely love it. It's got excellent key travel, good tactility, and it's very comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. And it also has a multi-stage backlight, allowing you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. But one thing to note, the keys are silver here and when they light up white, sometimes hard to see the contrast between the two something to be aware of. And like a lot of other HP laptops we've been seeing, the page up, page down, the delete key are all located on that end row there, vertically shown, of course, and some may like that, some don't. I actually do like it. And it has a really nicely sized glass precision touchpad that was very responsive. Scrolling was very good and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Good job on that front. And as I mentioned earlier, this is running that 12th gen Intel processor, the Core i7-12700H. It's a 45 watt CPU with 14 cores. That's six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. And the numbers are so far looking really good. As you can see from the multi-core performance, that's a big jump over the 11th gen from last year. And I think it's a really nice performer here. Not only is this looking good in terms of the multi-core performance, but the single core performance is improved as well. Now this has integrated Iris sexy graphics with 96 executional units and as you can see from the numbers in terms of the time spy and fire strike scores in the 3d mark testing it did okay although it's not going to blow you away you're not going to play AAA titles on their highest settings that's for sure but doing everyday tasks such as microsoft office email web browsing all worked well 1080p video editing worked well light 4k video editing is even possible on this machine and when you compare it to some of the competition in the category, it did well, although it didn't do quite as well as the MacBook Pro 13 with that M2 chip scoring 1919 versus this, which did 1726, which is not bad. It came in second place when you compare it to some of these in this category. Now, as far as the multi-core performance, that's the different story here where this outpaced the MacBook Pro 13 scoring a 9180 versus the 8978, but it didn't do quite as well as the Yoga 9i and one of my favorite 14-inch convertibles in 2022 with its Core i7-1260P that scored over 10,000. And it did really well on the Cinebench R23, a more sustained heavy workload test that will show thermal throttling. And here it did over 11,000, which is an excellent multi-core score. It also did very well single core. So this is going to be a great work machine that's going to be able to do sustained heavy workloads. And that's really good. So the performance is there for this machine. Now, I want to be very clear, this is not a gaming laptop. It does not have a discrete GPU. Instead, it uses an integrated Iris Xe graphics with 96 executional units. And if you lower some of the settings on the more popular titles, you'll definitely get some playable frame rates, as you see in this chart. Now, unfortunately, there's no Thunderbolt 4 support on this, so you can't add an external GPU to this unit, which would have been a nice option to have, especially at this low price point. Now, when it comes to the thermals, there are two fans for cooling, and I thought the thermals are actually pretty good. I didn't see too much thermal throttling, getting a core temperature as high as 96 degrees Celsius, and it maintained pretty good clock speeds throughout. That's why we're seeing good multi-core performance on a sustained workload, such as the Cinebench R23. And under performance mode, the fans will ramp up, getting as high as 46 decibels. And when it comes to the surface temperatures, it can get a little bit hot with a couple of hot spots, one above the keyboard and one on the underside, as you see here. Definitely a little bit warm, maybe even a little bit hot since it doesn't throttle down that much. So it will ramp up in terms of that heat. Now, for most everyday tasks, the fans hardly kick in. And when you're on that balance mode, really not very loud in terms of that fan noise. So actually really cool and quiet. Now, when it comes to the audio, this has Bang & Olsen tuned speakers, and I thought the volume was very good. There was some bass, and the mids were decent as well. Now, to give a listen, let's listen to Epidemic Sound, and if you want to save 10% off Epidemic Sound, see the link in the description below.
<laughs> All right, let's talk about the Achilles heel of this otherwise excellent device, and that would be its battery life. Now, this sports a three cell 51 watt hour battery, and it did a little bit over six hours on my continuous web surfing test over Wi Fi at 150 nits. So, that's not going to be great for real world mixed usage. And keep in mind that everybody's use case is a little bit different, so your mileage may vary. Now, keep in mind, I ran that test with a 90 hertz refresh rate enabled. That will definitely take away some battery life. But if you go down to the 60 hertz, you can probably get another hour to maybe hour and a half more battery life. So don't expect all day battery life with this. You'll have to take that 90 watt USB-C power adapter with you in your bag. Now, speaking of that power adapter, it takes about an hour and a half to give you a full charge. That's pretty fast. I like that. All right, let's wrap it all up. What do I think about the HP Pavilion Plus here in 2022? And I got to say, HP really nailed it here, especially with the price to performance ratio. At $850, you not only get an excellent 2.8K OLED display with a 90 hertz refresh rate, but you also get a 12th gen Intel Core i7 12700H, a 45 watt CPU with 14 cores. That's pretty much unheard of. Throw in an all metal aluminum design that is rock solid in premium terms of the build and you get some pretty decent speakers on this and a full hd 1080p webcam with presence detection that is pretty awesome but of course 850 dollars some compromises had to be made now while it does have a nice array of ports it doesn't have thunderbolt 4 support which would have been great and unfortunately, HP soldered the RAM into the motherboard, so that is not user upgradable. And speaking of the RAM, they went with the slower DDR4 rather than the faster DDR5 RAM we're seeing here in 2022. Now, the SSD, although it is upgradable, is PCIe Gen 3, not the faster PCIe Gen 4 that we've been seeing here in 2022 as well. And battery life has not been that stellar on this. In fact, it's been so-so, getting about six hours on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. So battery life is not going to be its strong suit, that's for sure. And while I like the fact that they offer an RTX 2050 discrete GPU, that is only offered on the U series, not the H series that we have here, because they didn't have enough room. They couldn't pull that off. That would have been amazing if they were able to put in that discrete GPU with this H series processor. But at the end of the day, HP pretty much nailed this. If you can live without that battery life, I think this is the one to go with, especially at $850, getting an OLED display with a 2.8K resolution and 90 Hertz with an H series processor. It's pretty much unheard of. That's why this is gonna get my editor's choice and I'm gonna give this a score of 90%, making the HP Pavilion Plus here for 2022, definitely worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy? The Pavilion Plus 14 all metal design, really good build, very little flex or give in the chassis. I'm really liking that. Great port selection. You got a two USB-A ports. You get a micro SD card slot. You get an HDMI 2.1 port. Uh, you get the two USB-C ports. Unfortunately, they're not Thunderbolt 4 ports. That would have made this pretty awesome. Although they are full function, they do support data charge and display out, and they've been working out really good. But having Thunderbolt 4 would have been a real coup here. Now, the best part of this is the display. 2.8K, 2880 by 1800 OLED display. Yes, OLED with a 90 hertz refresh rate. This is not something we normally see. Now, I did check out a really good deal as well recently, the Asus ZenBook 14 with that OLED display. For those that didn't catch that, I'll put a link in the description below. Now, that debuted at $750, but the processor is not as good as this one, although it was good in its own right, but it also had a really good sale where you can get that for $499. Now, that was for the 4th of July weekend, and those that took advantage of that got real lucky. But again, this is the only other one that I know of in this price range with an OLED display of this caliber. Now, this is $850, but what separates this from the Asus is the processor. This has the Core i7, 12 sub 800H, that's a 45 watt CPU, as opposed to a 28 watt CPU. This also has two more cores. This has 14 cores as opposed to the 12. So you're looking at a really nice uh, processor here as far as performance. Integrated Iris XE graphics are here, although 
There is no discrete GPU with the H series. They do offer an RTX 2050 discrete GPU with the U series. So that's a pretty interesting take on that. And the reasoning according to HP is they couldn't put it in this one because there just simply wasn't enough room for both the H series processor and that RTX 2050. And I'm sure the heat that it would generate would have been uh, unbearable, but this is gets pretty hot. And speaking of the thermals, it does get pretty hot on the surface temperatures. Little throttling, they let it go to about 95, 96 degrees Celsius and let it rip. So you're going to have the heat generated from that. You're also gonna have the fan noise in the performance mode to contend with 46 decibels, not the quietest out there. But when you're running it on the balanced mode and you're doing your everyday tasks, it remained pretty quiet. The fans will kick in intermittently, which was okay. It wasn't too loud. So overall, this has been great. Now, this is all sounding great on paper, but the Achilles heel, as I mentioned, is the battery life. Now, I was only able to eke out a little bit more than six hours on my continuous web surfing test. And that is not great. That's so, so battery life. And I think it's always, of course, going to depend on what you're doing with this laptop. But ultimately, this is not the strong suit. So you will be carrying around that 90 watt USB-C power adapter. And the good news is it's a fast power adapter in terms of the charge. You only need about an hour to hour and a half to get most of the charge, 80%, until ultimately that full charge at an hour and a half. So that's been pretty good in terms of that. $850 for that 2.8K 90 hertz display, that's gonna get you that Core i7-12700H and the premium all metal build. In the pavilion line, that's been pretty much unheard of. But again, I think it's a steal. For those interested, check out the link in the description below of where you can buy one. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.